Hello, <clears throat> Tommy here again. We're back in my shop. Today I want to talk a little bit about preparing a pattern uh, to mount on your stock. What I have here is just a piece of one by come out of my scrap pile out back. Uh, I cut it to fit the pattern. <clears throat> the pattern, I have a link to this pattern if you want to use it to practice with. I have a link to it in my description. Uh, it's a great PDF link. You may have to, depending on your computer or the program you use, or whatever you're using to print it with, you might have to adjust the sizes. It's supposed to be about, it's on there, about five and a, a quarter by seven and a quarter, and that's approximately what this one is. So I cut that out, of course, of eight and a half sheet of paper with my scissors. And then I cut this on my table saw. And it doesn't have to be exact dimensions as long as at least the size of your pattern. So anyway, that, that part is... The minimums you need. Uh, the, when I first started, the first book I started learning out of, and I knew nothing about a scroll saw, how to get ready to cut anything, they said just to glue it directly to your stock. And they, of course, use a, a temporary glue, like a craft glue or something. <clears throat> and then uh, when you got done cutting it and you want to remove the pattern off your work, soak it in some acetone and remove the pattern. Well, that was... Uh, that didn't work very well for me. I had all lots of problems getting the pieces of the pattern off. I had to scrape parts of it off, especially if you get in a little area. It's hard to get it off. Uh, so I thought there's got to be a better way. So I did a little looking and I found Steve Good. And he showed in a video how to use the blue tape. And I use, that's what I use, uh, is this blue tape. And then I have the green tape here also. Any kind of a, a temporary masking tape that you'd use for a painter's tape or something. Uh, but that's what I use right there. It's, it's not the cheapest tape in the world, but it works very well. It, it, it sticks well enough, and it's easy enough to remove at the same time, and it's easy to glue to. So what I do is I take the blue tape, and I cover my stock with the blue tape. And it doesn't matter if you run it long ways or cross ways. As long as you cover it totally. I'll run the first course here and then I'll shut down and finish it and we'll come back and, and show you about putting the glue on and mounting the pattern. So you know you start it off and I don't go all the way around. Uh, I'll save tape. Uh, and there are some instances I'll show you uh, the last step I do with this sometimes I'll go all the way around with the, with the last tape I use but that's that's how I start so let me finish that. Okay. So now I've got that on. Uh, the main thing you want to do is make sure you've got all the bubbles out of it. Now you see I have a little strip here that's not covered. Uh, depending on your pattern, that's okay. Normally I cover every every square inch of my stock, but in this case, put a pattern on like this. There are no cuts in here. It doesn't matter if it comes off wood. This is not a finished project. And you're going to cut right there, and then that's going to be discarded. So I'm not too concerned about that bare spot. Uh, normally, I would go ahead and just put another full piece and cover that. And it depends on the project I'm doing. In this case, I'm not going to do that. So the next step would be you glue your pattern to the tape, uh, which makes it a lot easier to remove off the wood at the end of the, uh, of the job. So there's basically two kinds of glue that I use. And you have this... Uh, these craft glues in a spray. And I like those because you get a good uh, coverage. It's, uh, it covers everything really well. You don't have any bare spots. Uh, although I don't like to use that because in my shop because I've got a small shop. It's, I don't like the fumes in here. Uh, so normally if I use that, I'll go outside to spray it. And the same way with spray painting and anything else, I'll do that outside because I don't need to be breathing all that. But otherwise, that's to me is the best way to go. Uh, you have a, a temporary bond or uh, tape or glue that you can spray on the tape. Or in this case, I would spray it probably on the pattern. I generally apply my glue to the pattern. But in this case, since I'm in the shop, and uh, this is a this is a pattern large enough, probably I would prefer to use the spray glue. <clears throat> but most patterns. I use uh, this this stick glue. This is a washable school glue. 
uh, gives you a very good temporary uh, stick of bluing and one thing about it as you ply the pattern you still have a little leeway to move it around depending on on what the project is that you can get it uh, in place so I'm going to cover the back of this pattern with this glue uh, I just go over I cover the whole thing really well so I'll finish this up and I'll come back and work okay. So I got that on. The main thing you want to make sure is you get the corners and the, and the edges so you don't grab it with your finger when you're working or trying to move it around. So then you try to line that up and just press it down. Make sure you get all the bubbles out of it. Keep it nice and smooth. A lot of times I just use the end of the, of the glue stick just to kind of press everything down like that. And that that now is on there, it's not going anywhere, but it can be peeled off if you need to remove it. So the next step is one that's not always absolutely necessary, but I do it almost on everything I do. And that is I'll cover this with a clear, like a packing packaging tape. And I'll cover it, and, and there are several reasons I cover it. Uh, for one thing, uh, if you have a thick piece uh, that... This tape helps lubricate your blade. If you have a, a thick, hard piece like a oak or something, in fact, if it's a really thick piece, I'll, I'll go completely around the piece so it'll have that tape on both sides. Uh, I almost always, though, use it on one side, not just for the lubrication purposes. It also helps uh, keep your pattern clean as you're working around with it. It makes it a little slicker up here but it, it make, keeps it clean so you're not getting stuff from your hands off on your pattern which could obscure some parts of it. Um, also it helps keep the pattern in place uh, so the edges don't try to come up as you, as you move around you're grabbing it moving it around on your saw it's easy to hit a corner that may not be glued well although this one seems to be pretty good but still that's just a little extra precaution uh, and then if for some reason there was a spot like in an area like this that your glue wasn't applied properly as you're cutting that then it's going to come loose and flop up and down uh, this will help a little bit in that when that happens though you just basically got to use your finger to hold it around to hold it down till you get around the corner but now I'm going to shut down for a minute and I'm going to cover this this uh, pattern with this clear tape and I'll be back in a minute okay so there we go <clears throat> I got the uh, clear tape on as you can see by the shininess on it, uh, that's just a little protection. I like to use it as a protection on the uh, on the pattern, so you don't get smears or, or whatever on it. Plus, it helps lubricate the blade. Uh, so, like I said, the the pattern I have a link to the pattern in the description. It's in a PDF form. This is a pattern that a lot of people I've seen use. It's in several different books. It's just a good practice pattern. So that's how I mount my patterns. I use the blue tape and then I glue the pattern on to the tape and then I cover it with the uh, with the clear tape. Now one thing about the clear tape, make sure you don't have any bubbles in there, uh, especially on a more intricate pattern because as you go down the pattern then those bubbles can catch uh, your sawdust and get up underneath the tape and obscure your pattern. And it's for the line that you're putting on. That's the only caveat, the thing I would be concerned about. Just make sure it's all nice and smooth. And I take my time normally. I make sure I get this as, as good as I can because the rest of the project is really dependent on the accuracy of your pattern and how well you can cut it. So in the next video, I plan we plan to cut this pattern. And we'll actually be on the scroll saw a lot from, from here out in this series. And I want to show you my techniques for these things. Now, for these straight lines, I'll cut it for you. Just, But uh, that's just something you have to practice yourself. Same thing on these other lines as you get more complex as you go along. And it's all about turning your piece on the scroll saw uh, in relation to your blade. Now, they show you here uh, which way to turn the piece. Uh, so you're cutting, you're cutting this way, you turn the piece to go around that corner. And that's fine. That works. 
uh, but I'm going to show you some techniques I use and we're going to assume that one side is waste and one side is the project that you're keeping and I'll show you what I do to get really precise cuts especially on an acute angle like that and an inside angle like that I use two or three different techniques and in some cases I use the waste to work in so I can make a nice crisp cut other other times I, I'll turn turn the work around and work backwards but I'll show you that as we work through these in the next uh, video so if you think that's going to be helpful please uh, hit the subscribe and the like button and uh, be ready when I post that one up and I uh, hope to see you then and thank you for watching this one